for circular shaft, we have the profile is to be the x y, for example, x squared plus y squared minus r squared equal to zero, so that is radius r. And for elliptic shaft, x y, and here is a b, so that one, this one is x over a squared plus y over b squared minus y equal to zero. Okay, so again, uh, this one, this equation describes is the equation of the boundaries. Here I highlight this equation represents, that actually represents is the profile here. Okay, so to this moment, we stick with this one. And Prandtl stretch function is constant along the boundaries. So any hint you, you obtained from that one? So what would be this one? What would be this function? It's a constant, constant including zero. So you simply pick this one. Say that is C. C is a non constant to be determined. Would that be simple? As long as you can come up with the equation describing the profile, the boundaries of the cross section, that is a candidate. I wouldn't say that it is, but that is the candidate. How about we try this one? How about this? That's a very simple one. Simply it a whole thing. This one, uh, which can be determined, to be determined by, I think that, by this. We simply introduce V into there, two, and cross-sectional integral, and V dx dy equal to t. Assuming you know how to integrate um, this, so simply that is qc times this is cross-sectional, and then x squared plus y squared minus r squared, and dx dy. Assuming you know how to implement this one, and this is a cross section. This cross section basically divide, defined by this one. Okay, and again, refer to the handouts. I copy and paste the detailed calculations. And oops, I think I have missed something somewhere. mistake. You don't need to scratch this one, you save this one. By this, by, I think it's by this one. By 
I these equations. Okay, so we have this form. We can easily implement the second order differential the derivative. So from here we can determine c is equal to minus uh, two uh, minus g beta divided by two. Okay. So by this one, then we can solve for C. So from here, I would say C, let me introduce this one, C equal to G beta 2 minus, okay. So with this one, right now this is the only the function of beta that we utilize these equations and use this to solve uh, beta, okay. So, and so right now here the C is this constant here, so that is 2 minus G beta divided by Q. I think that is the right strategy. So, again, this form here, if you remember, let me highlight this. If you remember what we have done earlier in the previous section, this is totally geometry related term. This term basically is influenced by the shape of the cross section. That term, if you remember, this one is relating, not exactly, relating to, we call it, say, polar moment of inertia, right? Okay, usually those terms, uh, when we have the different shape of, different size, different shape of the shaft, usually this one we can refer to the tables or index. So I wouldn't worry about too much whether people can <laughs> integrate this term, I wouldn't worry too much here, okay? So for this one then, let me say this is uh, the term equivalent to J. And so by solving this one carefully, then we can obtain, again, beta equal to T over GJ. And here, for circular shaft, J defined by pi over 2R force. Again, this term is Related to J, not exactly, but detail I skip quite a bit. Eventually, we can obtain by solving this one. We can have this one here. Okay, and be good in a similar way. And again, plugging into these equations for the elliptic shaft, and that one can be equal to here, uh, minus A, okay, so for this one you can solve for this constant by again using these common equations. And again, once you have everything, you plug in this equation, solve for beta, the same result as we obtained in the previous stress in the, in the, as we did in, from this section there. Okay. So basically the whole thing presented here is showing the, the strategy. And today probably don't have time to go over detail, but you can refer to the lecture notes here. Uh, this method is very good for, say, if we have the triangular shaft, something like this one, okay? So, for example, say, let me place the x, y coordinate like here, good? Are you able to formulate equation for this line? Yes, you can. That's a straight line, right? This line simply is the x equal to something here, something. For example, if this point is alpha, simply is alpha. Are you able to formulate this equation? Yes, basically that equation is y equal to a, uh, the bx, the ax plus b, right? This one, again, the third equation is y equal to a1, b1, a2, b2, something like this one, right? Okay. The Prandtl stretch function is constant along the three sides. So basically, that is unknown constant, 
decompose of the first equation one. For example, x minus alpha, that is equation one. Equation two, y minus a at one x minus b one. The third equation in the similar fashion is hidden here. Yes. Multiplication. Plus. Plus. Multiplication will induce the higher order polynomial. The thinking is to keep the try the lowest part degree as possible. Okay. So let me let me double check. You're right. <laughs> um, I think John is right. For this case, if we have the plus, then this term is zero along this side, but not zero along the two sides. The only possible way to get the multiplications, and that will make the things easier. Okay. And so look in, you can refer to the lecture notes and as well as textbook. And most of the textbook using triangular shaft as the illustrations. And that is a powerful application of the frontal stress functions. And one bad news, I can tell you for rectangular shaft, and you have four sides, one, two, three, and four sides, if you come up with the transfer fun the prime stretch function as C, uh, multiply with equation one, something like this, and multiply with equation two, three, and four, something like this one, okay? Prime stretch function doesn't work for this. Because if you have this equation to plug in, like we had here, we have assumed the form then we plug in the common equation to solve for something. Such an equation won't satisfy this one. When you implement this one, this is a higher degree polynomial, you will see that one by all means you have a complex. Okay, you have a complex. So when we go to the higher uh, the polygonal more than four sides, the second strategy, the second method of under stretch function doesn't 